Today we're diving into the world of PlayStation's mysterious mascot, the PlayStation Duck. This character has made appearances through PlayStation's history from the PS2 all the way to the PS5. But where did it come from? What is it? What's the deal with this duck? And how did it become an essential part of PlayStation lore? To understand the origins of the PlayStation Duck, we have to rewind back to a simpler time, the 1999 Tokyo Game Show, where Sony made the monumental announcement, the unveiling of the PlayStation 2. And to show off the PS2's graphical capabilities, what better way than to introduce the world to the Duck in Water tech demo. This demo featured a simple sink filled with water, complete with a rubber duck and a miniature submarine. Its sole purpose was to demonstrate the console's potential for realistic water effects. Fast forward now to 2004 at E3, where Sony showcased a similar duck-themed tech demo, but this time it was for the PSP, demonstrating its capabilities and the ease of porting PS2 games to the handheld. Devastatingly, the PSP duck demo is lost media, but you can find confirmations of its existence on archived articles. Hopefully one day the PSP duck turns up, but for now, all we have is the written memories from 2004 gaming journalists. The duck tech demo that truly stole the show though was the one on the PS3, the one I have right here, fully playable. This version was a more advanced iteration of the original PS2 duck demo, featuring realistic water physics, multiple ripple-causing objects, and an impressive showcase of the PS3's processing power. But the water effects didn't stop at ripples. You could even use the PS2 eye toy on the PS3 to pick up cups of water and pour them in an astoundingly realistic manner. And what would I want to do with cups? Well, you can imagine, I would like to just dip the cup in and get some of the water right out of them. Isn't this Coming incredibly in? cool? You reach in, get some more water. Get some water and throw it across the room. Have you ever played Super Rub-A-Dub? It's not hard to imagine that the PS3 demo's incredible water effects inspired Sumo Digital to turn this tech demo into a fully featured game, but here's the twist. Super Rub-A-Dub's development started first, and it was the ducks from this game that were used in the PS3's tech demo. In Super Rub-A-Dub on the PS3, you navigate the ducks through water exclusively using the PS3's six-axis controls. Tilting the controller causes the entire water surface to tilt in the same vein as Super Monkey Ball, and a flick of the controller sends your duck airborne. Your mission? Pop the bubbles that house your baby ducks, and try to collect them all in one swoop before setting them down the drain. There's enemies and obstacles that you're going to want to watch out for too. Sharks lurk in the tub, and they'll gobble up your rubber ducks if you get too close. Tossing them off the map by jumping is an option, but be careful not to lose your precious ducks in the process. They all jump and move at the same time. Additionally, you also have to deal with challenging whirlpools as you progress. Now, reviewers at the time unfortunately scolded the PlayStation Duck in its first official release. IGN, for instance, gave it a mere 2.9 out of 10, with the hilarious headline, What the duck? The review starts by comparing the experience to having your fingernails ripped out via pliers by the CIA as a method of torture. Most of the criticism aimed at the game revolves around its motion controls, but honestly they're not as bad as they seem. The menus most likely didn't need to be controlled by tilting the controller, but the gameplay really does control just fine. I think that most players struggle due to over tilting the controller or making abrupt movements before immediately getting annoyed and giving up, similar to the initial reviews of Lair. Hot take, but the 6-axis controls work perfectly if you just hold the controller naturally. I'll be looking at Lair and Sony's Go Sport series on the channel soon, so make sure you're subscribed if you want to see that. But anyway, let's focus on what Super Rub-A-Dub does right. Despite the negative reviews, the game offers a surprisingly robust package for its $7 price tag. Each difficulty level has 20 stages apiece. With three difficulty modes, you're left with a total of 60 individual stages. The game caters to a wide range of players. The starting stages are so easy a child could beat them, but the harder stages will make you want to die. Competing for gold medals in each stage demands precision and patience, and successfully doing so unlocks various styles of rubber ducks for your duck collection. On top of that, the game features an online leaderboard, which back in the day, I used to compete monthly to be number one on the monthly leaderboards and often succeeded, not to flex too hard but even playing through an emulator, it's still possible. It's even easier to get number one now with such few players playing. Super Rub-A-Dub even features local multiplayer, where players can take turns to compete for the best time and duck chain on stages. It was a great game to play with friends while just hanging out. These small pick-up-and-play PSN games were perfect for that, but now 
They're just a long lost memory. In the end, the PlayStation Duck's story is an intriguing one. It's a testament to the potential of motion controls and the creativity that can arise from seemingly simple tech demos. With the Duck's inclusion in Astrobot on the PS5 and the 15th anniversary logo for PlayStation, rest assured that this isn't the last we'll see of the PlayStation Duck, but it is the last we'll see of the Duck for today. That's a wrap for our dive into the PlayStation Duck and its multiple generation spanning extended universe. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, love you. Peace.